You didn't hear about it? It was all over the news. Right, I didn't know if you liked it. Yeah. And the worst part is, we threw off the bridge, and the body never showed up. It's, it's probably frozen. It's probably all the way out in the ocean. And it's fucking frozen, so she's not coming up anytime kind of soon. Her body's probably at the bottom of the fucking ocean. And she got eaten by a shark or some fucking shit. Yeah. Bro, this is like a fucking movie, bro. Yeah. All the elements of a movie were there. Money, betrayal, and a missing young woman by the name of Sarah Stern. When police hit a dead end in their search for the 19-year-old budding artist from Neptune City, an amateur filmmaker stepped up to crack the case. What he found out was so hard to fathom that some even argued it was a script for one of his horror movies. But this wasn't fiction. This was a real life mystery. The opening act took place right here on this bridge at the Jersey Shore in the wee hours of December 3rd, 2016. 911, where is the emergency? Uh, yeah, not an emergency. Um, actually, on the Belmar Bridge, right after heading south in the middle of the bridge, there's a car that's abandoned. There was no one inside the 1994 Oldsmobile 88 when police found it parked atop the Route 35 bridge. But the keys were still in the ignition, and the car was operable. Police thought the worst. The car belonged to 96-year-old Lillian Stern, who regularly loaned it to her granddaughter, Sarah. But no one was at the Stern house. That's in safe place! Trying to locate the registered owner. There's nobody in the house so far. 96-year-old woman car at the top of the bridge. Husband's wife died of cancer a couple years ago. We don't know if we got a jumper or what. Police honed in on Liam McAtasney, Sarah's childhood friend, who had spent the previous day with her. You're Liam? You got a second? Can I come in and talk to you real quick? Yeah, no problem, officer. Is uh, Sarah here by chance? No. When was the last time you talked to her? I was with her today. We're trying to find Sarah. What's her, what was her mindset last time you talked to her? I just know she's been trying to get away. Police returned later that day. What's going on? Just give me what's going on with her. Like, how's she been acting lately? Um, the same? Different? No. Liam, you've known her for since first grade, you said. Yeah. Has she, has she been different than normal lately? Well. And for how long? In the past, she has had a tendency to have self-destructive suicidal behavior. Over the past few months, she's been telling me excuse me, how uh, bad her relationship with her father is and how she just needs to get out of here. Why was it bad? What made it bad? Fighting. Arguing, fighting? Arguing, fighting. Liam would know about such things. I've, I've been friends with her since first grade, so we have a pretty good friendship. The massive search for Sarah yielded no results. So, detectives brought Liam in to question him further. There's a lot of people, a lot of police officers, from the state police, to divers, to us, to the other detectives that you met over the weekend, mm -hmm. trying to find Sarah. Right. And, um, there's a lot of resources um, involved here. One thing I, I want to talk to you guys about was um, if she she did jump off the bridge. What are the odds that she's not somewhere all the way out in the ocean by now? And did she tell you she was going to jump off the bridge? No. A week after Sarah disappeared, hundreds of community volunteers fanned out in search of her. We just don't know what happened. We just want to. We, we just want to answer some questions. Everybody loves Sarah, and we just want to. You know, it's breaking my heart not to know where she's at. Among the volunteers were her former high school classmates, Liam, and his roommate Preston Taylor, who was Sarah's date for the Neptune High School junior prom. She's pretty strong, so hopefully we're gonna find something today. But they didn't find anything and Sarah's family had to endure the holidays not knowing what had happened to her. 
Then, in the dead of winter, here at Belmar Police Headquarters, who shows up but a filmmaker from Brooklyn, New York, who says he has some information. Anthony Curry grew up in Neptune and knew Liam McAtasney from high school. Anthony told police that during a visit on Thanksgiving, Liam told him that their classmate, Sarah Stern, found a lot of cash in a house her family owns in Avon. Liam went on to reveal a plot so diabolical that Anthony didn't take it seriously. He told me he was going to uh, meet up Sarah. She found his money and uh, they were going to count it together. He was going to choke her, choke her out, uh, bring her to the bridge, throw her off. Preston was going to drive the escape vehicle and uh, and they were going to bury the money and leave the keys and the ignition and make it look like she killed herself. But police would need more to go on if they were going to crack the case. So they asked Anthony to arrange a meeting with Liam and secretly tape it. The meeting took place on January 31st, 2017 on Ocean Avenue in Bradley Beach. Liam McAtasney and his roommate Preston Taylor were arrested the next day. Liam was charged with murdering his childhood friend and Preston was charged with helping him to dispose of her body. Liam invoked his right to remain silent, but Preston immediately spilled his guts to detectives. He even went with them to the Stearns' house to show them what he did with Sarah's body after Liam came home and told him he had killed her. How was Sarah's body positioned in this bathroom? She was sitting like this, tucked into the corner and leaning over the toilet. Okay, and her feet were where? Sticking out into the room. Okay. Preston also explained in detail what he and Liam did when they returned to Sarah's house later that night after Liam got off of work. I grabbed her legs and got her over to the fence. Okay. So you have, you're carrying Sarah by her legs? Are her legs dragging on the ground or are they up in the air? I was like holding them up okay. in the air. And what part of Sarah's body was Liam holding? Her torso. Okay. And he carried her over to this fence near the safe was. Hoisted her up and over, threw the safe over, the two of us jumped over. On April 21st, 2017, with Sarah's body still missing, detectives took Preston to the Route 35 bridge. Okay. We're saying Liam had her... Liam had her by the shoulders and hoisted her up onto the railing. And then I pushed her feet over so that she was going over the rest of the way. As she went over immediately after, her body was up and over the rail. As we were running back to my car, the black uh, Mercury Mystique, we heard a uh, loud metallic bang, and that was all. Okay. Did you um, have any conversation with Liam about that noise that you heard? No. Okay. Four days later, Preston pled guilty to robbery, desecration of human remains and other crimes, and agreed to testify against Liam. Preston admitted to a judge that he took part in the scheme to rob Sarah for a $3,000 cut of the $10,000 proceeds. The same day, a grand jury handed up a murder indictment against Liam. As Liam's trial approached, it became apparent that the video Anthony Curry secretly recorded was the key piece of evidence against him. Uh, I guess I'm going to also watch the, uh, the video audio too in chambers, correct? Yeah, I mean, that's how you're on. Its contents hadn't been made public, but apparently the video was so damaging that Liam's attorney tried to keep it from the jury. A judge ruled otherwise. Liam's trial began in Freehold on January 23rd, 2019, almost two years to the date after Anthony Curry came forward to the Belmar police. It was only the second time 
that the Monmouth County Prosecutor's Office had tried a murder case without a body, something that Liam's defense attorney, Carlos Diaz Cobo, hoped to capitalize on. If there is nothing else that you take into consideration in this case with respect to the mountains of reasonable doubt that exist that require you to find my client not guilty, that in and of itself is enough to create the reasonable doubt that quits my client. Because you're not going to hear evidence, or you didn't hear any evidence from any medical examiners as to a cause of death, or anything like that. There is no body, there's nothing that was, all, there's no body. Ladies and gentlemen, there's no body. But Assistant Prosecutor Megan Doyle assured the jury that Sarah was dead. Sarah Stern will not be walking through those doors into this courtroom at any point. Preston Taylor was the state's first witness against Liam revealing to the jury the months-long plot to rob and murder their friend. Specifically decided that Liam was strangler. Any other way, any type of weapon would have been too messy, would have left all that evidence. And then as far as what to do with her after she was dead, we uh, talked about a couple of plans, burying her down at a campsite that Liam's dad owns. Uh, just leaving her at the house and then uh, ultimately, we, ultimately we decided that the best way to go about it would be to make it look like a suicide. Another state's witness was Michael Stern, Sarah's father, who debunked Liam's story that he and Sarah didn't get along. Michael Stern also said she wasn't depressed or suicidal at all. It's a picture of Nutella to go 12 pack and a pair of uh, uh, work boots. Are they the, is that the gift that you made reference to that you gave your daughter for her birthday? Yes. And did she make a comment on it? Um, yes, she okay. did. Now, it does give, it lists whose account that is, correct? Yes, Sarah oh. Stern. And what does she say about that gift? My dad knows me so well with the, the four exclamation points and hashtag Nutella. Uh, uh, an emoji, smiley face with a couple hearts and Timberlands. Uh, and then a snowflake and another hashtag, my dad's the best. The moment everyone was waiting for came on February 7th, 2019, when Anthony Curry walked into the courtroom to testify and reveal the secret video. Do you have a conversation with him on Snapchat that alarmed you? Yes. Tell me about that. He asked me if the police had questioned me about him. And what did you say? No. And what did he say? Do you remember? If they haven't by now, or they talk to everybody I know, if they haven't by now, they won't. And when you got that Prior to getting that text, did you want to believe your friend murdered somebody? No, nobody wants to believe that. Did your, after you got that text, did your feelings about that change? Yes. But in the end, the state's star witness turned out not to be Preston Taylor or Anthony Curry, but Liam McAtasney himself, shown on the big screen in the courtroom, telling Anthony Curry in chilling detail what he had done to Sarah as Michael Stern watched and wept. I pretty much hung her, like, I just, I picked her up and had her just like dangling off the ground and she just pissed herself and oh, yeah, you lose control of said my name and then that was it. And it took me a half an hour to kill her. I thought I was gonna be able to choke her out and have her out in like a couple minutes. Okay. I choked her out, and then she was just laying there having a seizure or something. So then I just, I had to, I got a shirt, and I just shoved it down her throat so she wouldn't throw up or anything, and held my finger over her nose. Liam even told Anthony he timed just how long it took him to kill Sarah. And set a timer. That's the only time I had my phone. 
and it took me like a half an hour after I hit start. Phone the timer. It turned out the effort was for nothing. The worst part of it is I thought I was walking out 50 grand, 100 grand in my pocket. She had one safe and she took money out and she only had 10 grand. And this money, I don't know if it was Bert or something, it's fucking old money, terrible quality. I don't even know if I can put any of it in the fucking bank. But Liam didn't seem phased. It's your life, you might as well make it one. What, are you going to live some boring ass life? With the confessional video before the jury, the case against Liam seemed ironclad. Defense attorney Carlos Diaz Cobo tried to downplay it, saying it was merely Liam's audition for a role in one of Anthony's movies. It says that. She said his name, urinated on herself, and then that was it. That, in and of itself, tells you that what he's saying is made up of vision to Anthony Curry, not true, a fabrication. Not believable, not credible, because ladies and gentlemen, the Monmouth County Prosecutor's Office investigated this case, and they did not find any urine, blood, any signs of a struggle inside that residence that would corroborate what he's saying, what he's making up in this horrible video. Diaz Cobo also tried to raise a cloud of doubt by calling local contractor Craig Hetzel Sr. to testify. There was a girl walking down the street. And I said to my son, I said, that is an awfully good looking girl to be walking on the street at five o'clock in the morning. He responded to me, he said, is that what they call the walk of shame? I said, I don't know what that is, but that girl did not want to be seen. I got a good look right in her face, stared right into her eyes the way I'm looking at you right now, and she turned her head that way and ducked down an alleyway. And I said, I'm sorry. I said, that's, that's who we saw. That's who I saw that day. That's it. This is the picture that you saw? That's it. Hetzel was adamant he saw a car abandoned on the bridge minutes later. And just before the top of the bridge, there was a car broken down on the side of the road. I said, that's a bad place for a car to be broken down because another couple feet you could have cruised right down into Belmar. But prosecutors pointed out Sarah's car had been towed from the bridge hours earlier. Liam never testified. The jury got the case on February 25th, 2019. The panel asked to watch the Anthony Curry video again. The following day, the jury reached a verdict. Guilty. Less than a month later, on March 24th, Michael Stern gathered on the Route 35 bridge with friends and family to mark what would have been his only daughter's 22nd birthday. I'm feeling happy and sad at the same time. I miss Sarah. But this is a nice tribute to her. She should have been here with us. We do have justice for Sarah. That's a good thing. Very good thing. Final justice won't be served until Liam McAtasney and Preston Taylor stand before a judge to be sentenced for their crimes against Sarah Stern, their friend and high school classmate. For all the coverage on this tragic story from start to finish, turn to app.com and the Asbury Park Press, your premier source of news on the Sarah Stern murder. And be sure to subscribe. This is Kathleen Hopkins, court reporter for the Asbury Park Press, with press videographer Thomas P. Costello 
at the Monmouth County Courthouse in Freehold.